Max Starks, offensive lineman for the Arizona Cardinals, joining Doug and Wolf here on Arizona Sports, now on 98.7 FM. Max, good morning. Is this your dream come true to be on a radio show with the brother of Craig Wolf? <laughs> you know, it, it is a dream come true. I can now say that I've completed my rounds of the Wolfley family <laughs> from coast to coast. <laughs> Max, how you doing, buddy? How's training camp going for you? Uh, it's, it's going good. It's going good. I had a little hiccup, obviously, in a game on Saturday night and sprained my ankle, but uh, everything's uh, going really well in rehab, and hopefully I'll be back um, you know, very soon. What happened on that play, Max? You know, uh, it was a passing play. Uh, I was locking out uh, one of the defensive ends, and uh, – you know, went to go for extension. He had his hands kind of in my face. And next thing I know, I felt someone fall on the back of my legs, and I just went down kind of awkwardly, and I landed right on top of my yeah. uh, ankle calf area. You know, as soon as you said he had his hands up near your face, uh, it immediately right. got me thinking of the flags nowadays. Uh, this will obviously between, be between us because we don't want any of the referees hearing this, but – have you guys already thought about how you're going to try to move, how you're going to try to lift his hands up and maybe bait defenders into getting yourself a call? You know, the funny thing is, you know, you think of, of ways of how, how, to, how to accomplish things, and, and that, that, that honestly has not been one because the problem is, is that, you know, once again, it's a very tough call, especially, you know, when we're talking about any contact to the face, you know, because it's hard to see a quick jab, especially when you're trying to look at everything mm-hmm. that, that, you know, that everybody's doing on the field, you know, because you're looking for the illegal contact. You're looking for any chop blocks, you know, making sure that they're in front of them, not on the side of their legs. And then now you're worried about offenders and defenders trying to, you know, hit each other in the face. And <laughs> it's one of those things, like, it has to be a very obvious one, I think, for it to get called. But you obviously don't want to bait that because, you know, hand of the face is just – one of the things that it knocks you out and you kind of get stunned as far as what your responsibilities are and trying to get, <laughs> trying to get a guy stopped. You know, I had, I had him in my face and it didn't get called twice. So I'm like, ah, it's an inconsistent call. I think they're looking more for offensive guys um, to do that. Cause it happened in the Houston game. Nothing got called. And then obviously this game during that play, I had hands inside of my face mask and no, nothing. Yeah, <laughs> so we're talking. I haven't, I haven't even counted on that one. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it, man. We're talking to Max Starks, offensive tackle for the Arizona Cardinals here on the Doug and Wolf Show. You were with the Pittsburgh Steelers for nine years, and Bruce Arians, of course, was with you and there on that coaching staff. What do you think of Bruce Arians? Tell us something about BA that nobody knows that you can actually say on the air. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, the good thing is I, I've, I've known B.A. for a long time. I mean, known him for now 11 years. I mean, when I started at Pittsburgh, he was a wide receivers coach. So I've seen the, the progression, so to speak, you know, from, Yo. wire, from position coach to coordinator to now head coach. And the one thing I can say, he, he's consistent. I mean, he, he's a... He's he's a really cool, you know. Obviously, he's he's a very real coach. He resonates. He resonates with players, doesn't he? He's he's got yeah. this connection. Yeah, because I mean, he ha- he has that, you know, as as they call that. They he has the swagger, you know, that that you want in a head coach. You want that, com- you know, confidence, not necessarily arrogance or cockiness, but confidence, you know, in his team, in his guys. Yeah. And what we can do, and that, and as a player, that's all you can ask for from a coach. And he's upfront and honest. You know, you'll never, you'll never have to wonder where you stand with him. Love that, you know, Max. Yeah, you, you got to appreciate that, and, and I and I do. And, and he's he's always been, you know, a cool person with me, always real with me. You know, through the process, you know, through the years, and and I can appreciate that. And that's uh, one of the reasons why you know I ended up signing here was because it was a great opportunity once again to play for BA. And also to play with, uh, you know, Goody and uh, Coach Zerline mm-hmm. uh, once again, because they were my coaches in Pittsburgh as well, along with VA. You're going to be such an expert on this. If you just tuned in, Max Starks joining Doug and Wolf. Uh, I don't know. I'm assuming you have the same thing in life, but all of us out here that, that don't get to play football for a living, there's that annoying guy in the office, okay? So I get a text from the annoying guy in the office last night who's a Jets fan, and his text says, 
how do you feel about simply having the offensive version of Rex Ryan as your head coach? Because he knows how much I don't like Rex Ryan and all of his antics and everything he does with the Jets. So he is comparing Bruce Arians and his confidence and cockiness to Rex Ryan. Since you know B.A., does that comparison hold water at all? No, it does not. No, Why? It does not because... <laughs> Because Coach Ryan is, is is a head case, <laughs> 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 and not because I have not liked any of the defenses that I played against him from Baltimore. Yes, to New York. <laughs> right. Not at all. Not biased. Uh, but That's I think good. One of the biggest things is that uh, you know you, you don't see. I mean, the antics and the crazy, the crazy off comments or the the, the pictures in New York. Uh, papers and magazines, of <laughs> him on vacation, and and his Sanchez, 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 however they call him. You don't see uh, BA uh, running obsession. with the Bulls or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I don't see BA doing that. You know, if anything, he'll be on the golf course. <laughs> yes, <laughs> somewhere we're trying talk- to compete in Augusta. <laughs> we're, we're we're talking to Max Starks, offensive tackle for the Arizona Cardinals, here on the Duggan Wolf Show. Okay. The offense of Bruce Arians, how much different is it here than what it was in Pittsburgh? I think it's, it's expanded, um, you know, obviously since he's left Pittsburgh and, you know, had, had his time in Indianapolis and now here. I think he's, he's amassed a, a wider array of um, offensive plays, um, you know, not to get into detail to give away any trade yeah. secrets, but uh, it, it, it's a lot more stuff. It's expanded upon that, but it still has its core concepts and what we, what uh, what he started in Pittsburgh and what you know we've been running for eight years there in Pittsburgh. Uh, um, very similar terminology, very similar uh, uh, plays, but they're expanded. You know, and there's more um, there's more options inside of this offense now than there was uh, um, before. And I think that's a that's an awesome thing, and it's good to see that progression. And I think it, it allows for a lot of versatility and a lot of success. Max Starks, Steelers offensive lineman, hoping his teammates sack Bengals quarterback Carson Palmer versus Max Starks now protecting Carson Palmer. <laughs> who is the guy that you thought Carson Palmer was, and who is he really? <laughs> well, I mean – you know, the funny thing is, I actually met Carson when I was uh, a high school kid um, on my official visit to USC. And I thought he was a cool guy then. And even when we played against Cincinnati, even when I was hoping that he'd get sacked or he'd throw an interception to his old his old college roommate, Troy Palomalu, <laughs> um, you know, I, I knew he was a good guy. And then it only reaffirmed it once I came here. And uh, Carson has been consistent and just a cool calm collected dude and very easy to talk to very approachable and you know n- nothing really changed in my mind except for now you know rooting for him they're rooting against him <laughs> <laughs> you know I, I i think i think max i know the answer to this question but i'm going to throw it out there anyways okay you are a swing tackle you're a guy that can play right tackle or you're a guy that can play left tackle and there's a lot of value in the national football league for guys like you that are swing tackles do you have a preference? You know, um, I don't have a preference per se. Um, I just say it's, it's it's been a it's been a fun process knocking the rust off of uh, my right side skills. <laughs> yeah, because you know, again, you you have you've played left tackle for a long time. Yet at the same time, we all know that's probably a more difficult proposition. Correct. Yeah, it, it, it's it's a tougher one. I think it's more challenging because I mean, obviously you're you're going to get the defense's best best guy on defense more often than not. It's yes. usually going to be that weak side rusher. Um, he's usually the undersized D lineman or the um, undersized uh, outside backer, depending on the defense. And he's going to be quicker than just almost everybody except for DBs on on the field. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So you know that was a challenge, and I did it for seven years and played a lot of games at left tackle. But, um, but, you know, I got my start uh, in this league at the right tackle position. I got over mm-hmm. 30 starts at that position. So it was um, it's something that I'm very familiar with. And in college, my senior year, you know, I, I, I swung between four different positions. I played everything but center my senior year of college. So it's something I had that familiarity with. And I actually enjoyed the right side because you get to win the ball more on that side. 
as opposed to being the backside cutoff guy. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking to Max Starks, offensive lineman for the Arizona Cardinals. Take us inside the meeting room, if if you don't mind, because before you got here last year, Jonathan Cooper put on a show. I, I mean, the preseason of Jonathan Cooper in 2013 was fantastic, and I have no idea what it's like to come back from a broken leg. But you hear all the needling that's going on from Coach Arians. You hear, "Hey, you can't, you can't, you can't do anything in the training room and things like that." So tell us about the Jonathan Cooper that you see this year. Well, I th- I, th- I didn't get to see the uh, Jonathan Cooper show, um, you know, per se last year, and you know I heard about it, and obviously I was in San Diego mm-hmm. um, when he was doing that. But I think um, you know it's it's one of those things. It's a tough situation because there's high expectations that are to be placed upon a guy that you know you draft in the first round, and then he has an injury and it's a nagging injury. You know, it's it's one of those things that you know what he's capable of and you just want it to be there and you want him to be as healthy as possible. And I think, you know, it's a, it's a tough proposition for him, but I think he's handling it in stride and uh, he's doing everything in his power. You know, we, we've been rehabbing together, so he's been trying to push it as much as he can. And, you know, obviously you you don't want to get out there on the field unless you're giving 100% and you're able, you're confident to be able to protect your teammates and open up holes, you know, to the best of your ability. And if you can't, you know, you don't want to be there and you don't want to take away from this offense because it is high octane and very explosive. Max, so my, bro- I- my brother Craig, whom you know, is the sideline analyst, of course, for the Pittsburgh Steelers, having been there for years. He told me you wear a size 22 shoe. Is that correct? See, and that's the thing. Wolf always messes with me on, on the sidelines. Right? Because, you know, he, he does his sideline report right next to the offensive line bench. <laughs> right. and, and he's always, like, kicking my toes and stuff randomly. And, <laughs> and now, It's not a 22, but it, I do wear a size 19. A so size he, 19 shoe. Do yeah. you have a hard time finding shoes that are size 19? Yeah, you know, it's a bit of a struggle. You know, you can't necessarily get the the cool shoes, um, <laughs> you know, when they come out. You know, you hear all these people who are sneakerheads. I've never been a sneakerhead because I've never been fashionably on time with my shoe selection. So, <laughs> you know, it's one of those things, you know, you kind of just uh, roll the punches and whatever you get, you get. And, uh, you know, luckily, you know, now by playing football, I've had access to to be able to get some newer shoes, but still never quite on time with everybody else. So when I do get a current pair of shoes, you know, I'm excited, but I'm not as excited as, as, as the uh, younger guys are nowadays to keep up with their fashion. 